you know how you think you're invincible like it's not gonna happen to me hey y'all it's your girl kiki g and welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be about my diagnosis with breast cancer yes I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 31 and I decided to share my journey, talk about my diagnosis, what treatment I needed to go through, and all of the details. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. Also, if you want to tune in and follow my journey on my fight with breast cancer, please make sure that you subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time I post a video, and also make sure that you follow me on IG. I'm going to put it on screen somewhere. Um, okay, so let's get into this. I have my notes here. <laughs> so first, let's talk about my diagnosis. So I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 31. Um, this was last year, so in June, of, June 1st to be exact, I got the call that I have breast cancer. I was diagnosed with triple negative stage two breast cancer, which is an aggressive form of breast cancer. And it's actually crazy because in December of 2020, I had had my yearly physical. Um, and during that physical, they do a check to make sure that I don't have any lumps. And I didn't. I had nothing in December. But at the end of April, when I first felt the lump. It had, it had grown within that four months time. I'm going to back up a little bit and actually talk about what made me even go in to the doctor to get checked. So at age 31, I wasn't at the age where I needed to start getting mammograms. Um, but you know, when you would go for your yearly physical, or at least me, my doctor would tell me, you know, you're starting to get to the age where you need to make sure you do self checks, right? So he's like in the shower, make sure that you're checking yourself. Have always been a very healthy individual. Um, you know, never, never really get sick. Um, may get sick once a year with a cold or something and it may last two days and I'm back to normal. So, so I was never really doing checks, you know, I didn't, I, you know how you think you're invincible like it's not gonna happen to me so i i i want to say that i found the lump on accident but it was really nothing but god um i wasn't looking for it i wasn't doing a check or anything what i actually did was i think i went to go pick up i think i went to go pick up my laptop or something i put the laptop under my arm and i must have hit the lump and like you know reflex i reached for that area with my hand and when I did that, that was when I felt the lump. So it was purely, it was, it was God. It was, I was not looking for it. It was not intentional for me to find it. And so I found, I felt the lump and I'm just like, oh my God. So I call my mom and I tell her and she's like, because I, I don't care how old I get, I'm gonna call my mama. <laughs> I gotta call my mama. I gotta ask questions and tell my mama first. So I call my mom. I told her and she immediately, of course, was like, you need to go get it checked out. I was like two days away from going to Mexico. So I'm like, okay, I'm not about to do that right now. I'm about to go on my trip. That was what was on my mind at the time. So we, we went to Mexico and when I came back, she of course checked in like, you know, did you get that appointment scheduled? I didn't have it scheduled. Long story short, I went ahead and scheduled the appointment. Um, got in the doctor's like you're fairly healthy i'm not worried you're young i'm not worried it's probably just a fibroid adenoma i don't think it's cancerous but it's routine for us to have you go get a mammogram and so she did i went and got a mammogram and when i got the mammogram they were like well it's it's not checking off all the boxes for it to be a fibroid adenoma so just to make sure we're gonna have you come back to get a biopsy also at that time when they did the mammogram they found a second lump and this is all in my left breast. Um, so they found a second lump and they also said that my lymph nodes were inflamed. So they're like, just to make sure we're going to bring you back for a biopsy. So still at that point, I'm like, they're gonna do these tests and it's still gonna come back that it's a fibroid adenoma, it's non-cancerous, like I'm, I'm gonna be fine. Biopsy, they took a sample from both lumps that they found. So the one that I found, which was here, and the one that they found was on the in, inside of my left breast. And so took that and I'm still, you know, not, not really concerned. I'm thinking it's going to come back negative. They called me on June 1st and they told me that the one that they found, the second one, was non-cancerous. 
However, the, the one that I found was cancerous. And it was, I guess they were really surprised about it because although it was immobile, like I guess fibroid adenomas are, they move around more easily. That's why they really thought it was gonna be just a fibroid adenoma. They didn't think it was gonna be cancerous because it was not, um, normally cancerous lumps are more stable. Like they're, you can't move them as much. My lump was moving around. So they did the biopsy, came back, and it turned out that um, the one that they found, the second one was non-cancerous, and the one that I actually found was um, cancerous. So I don't even really know how to describe that moment. Um, of course, I was in shock. I was emotional. Like, I, I, I was in shock first, because when I was on the phone with the nurse, I, like, immediately... Like, I didn't immediately start crying. I just was, like, silent. <laughs> That's, I was just in shock, speechless. Um, and so I called my mom, and, you know, I'm still talking to her kind of like there's nothing, like, really no emotion. Um, I think I was just numb at that point. Um, and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. And then I got another call from a realtor, and while I'm on the phone with her, I just bust into tears. It was just a crazy moment. Um, definitely a life-changing moment, for sure. So, the, so after that, I went back to the doctor. They had me come, come back in, and they wanted to just, I guess, further in investigate. With me being so young, they're like, you know, this is this is abnormal. This is, you know, not many people your age are die have this positive diagnosis. So they wanted to just further investigate. And so what they did was. Um, they did gen some genetic testing because they wanted to see if this was something that just happened by chance or if this was actually due to my, my genetics. And so they tested me for the BRCA1, BRCA, um, it's the breast cancer 1 mutation. The results came back and I am positive for the breast cancer 1 gene. So that put me at a higher risk for having breast cancer. Really they say when you have the breast cancer mutation, it's not a matter of if you get it, it's more so a matter of when you get it. And so for me, I got it at 31. Okay, so my treatment plan. Because I had that aggressive form, I had the BRCA1 mutation, I had to go through quite a bit of treatment. So the first part of treatment I had was chemotherapy. It was a 20 week treatment um, that was broken up into two parts. The first eight weeks, I had two chemo meds. I had the adriamycin and the cytoxin. And if you've heard of anything about the adriamycin, the adriamycin is the absolute worst. They actually nickname it the red devil because it's like a red dye and it is some terrible stuff. So many side effects I've had to go through. And I plan to get in depth up about those side effects and what I did to manage those side effects in a new video. So make sure that you subscribe and I'll talk about all of those things. And so the remaining 12 weeks, I had one med, which was um, the plan was to give me Taxol and that was something that I would have to go for every week. So 20 weeks total for chemo. After chemo, um, the plan was to do surgery. Normally with surgery, when you have breast cancer, you're either gonna get a lumpectomy, where they just go in and take the, that lump out, they remove that lump, or you have the option to, or you know, the, the doctor, your surgeon or doctor will recommend that you do a mastectomy. And it could be a bilateral mastectomy where you get both or removed or lateral mastectomy where you just get one removed. Because I'm BRCA1 positive, they recommended that I get a double mastectomy. Honestly, I had already kind of made a decision for myself that I wanted to get a double mastectomy because I didn't want to have to go through chemo and all of that again if it ever came back. So after surgery, the next step in my treatment was radiation. The radiation treatment was Monday through Friday for five weeks. 25 radiation treatments total. So pretty much like a job. Monday through Friday, I would go to the hospital and they would do the radiation okay. treatment. So thoughts before starting treatment. It was a lot. First thought that I had was just, it was just a culture shock. Being someone who, like I said, was rarely ever sick, having to go to the doctor all the time, so many appointments, the constant phone calls from the nurses and the doctors and the surgeon, and it was like night and day. It was literally like a culture shock, like p picking me up and putting me in a whole nother country. Another huge change for me was just being vulnerable. Like that took a while for me to accept. Um, just being in that vulnerable state. I'm normally, 
the strong one, right? I'm normally the one that people come to for, for help. I had to change my mindset. You know, I had to accept the fact that I had to accept help from someone and not, you know, I, I didn't know how to ask for help. Um, I had to get used to that. It was just a lot of um, changing that I had to do. So it was kind of like a swap in my life. Like I went from being the one that was providing the help or you know that people came to for the help to the one that needed the help. If you're that type of person that in your family where you you know you're considered the strong one, then you know what I'm talking about, and you understand why that is hard for you to get out of. You know, it's hard for you to learn how to ask for help. Another huge thought after getting that my diagnosis was whether or not I was going to lose my hair. And um, after they told me my treatment, they pretty much confirmed that yes, you're going to lose your hair. You're gonna lose all your hair. That was another thing that I was really emotional about. You know, like, I think that was something that I was more emotional about than anything else, honestly, was the fact that I was about to lose my hair. And it was crazy because I was already considering cutting my hair again, um, not too long before getting that diagnosis. There's something about when you have the choice to do something as opposed to having no choice for something to happen. My choice was taken away. And that was what I was struggling with. My last huge concern after my diagnosis was what that was going to do to my ovaries, my uterus, fallopian tubes, because I want I want to have more kids. So that, along with my hair and um, just being in a vulnerable state, was those were the three biggest concerns that I had. Um, so why I decided to share my journey, um, I. I think I've mentioned before, I'm normally an introvert. I'm a private person, so this is unlike me to just be talking about this, but I am a true believer that the things that we go through are, in life are not just for ourselves, but they're to help other people through. So, um, you know, God has allowed me to go through this process, survive this process. I'm blessed, I'm grateful. I feel like I would be doing an injustice to him if I did not share my testimony. And so that is why I decided to film my journey. Honestly, you guys are seeing this video now, but this is filmed after I've gone through breast cancer. Once I got my diagnosis and I like to think it was happening, like things started happening, um, as far as like getting my court placed and everything, like my appointments were coming up to start treatment. Um, I had really decided like I'm about to document my journey and I literally just started recording. So I have content from the very beginning um, that I haven't shared yet and that is what I plan to share with you guys. I came across this quote on social media and it really just confirmed things for me and this is again a reason why I really decided to proceed with this. The quote said, my journey is someone else's survival guide. Keep pressing. That's literally what I want this content to be used for. Like I really want to... Um, help some help the next person who may have to go through this and it doesn't necessarily have to be breast cancer it can be any any disease it could be and it, it doesn't even have to be a disease it could be anything that someone is going through in life where you know it's a trying time for them it's a difficult journey um and they have to push through when they don't want to this is what i want my videos to be used for encouragement um love and support virtually i want you guys to see that if she can do it I can do it. If God did it for her, he will do it for me. So I'm hoping that you all find value in this content and the information that I provide that is helpful to you all. I will be posting weekly vlogs that will really just show, you know, what I went through day to day. So again, please make sure that you are following along, that you're subscribed, that you follow me on IG. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you made it to the end of this video, you a real one. And God willing, I'll see you in my next one. Below me, come me, below me, come me, below me, come me, below me, come me, Kiki, below me.